What up, witch? Welcome to my channel and welcome to an Oracle unboxing. I'm Luna and this week I changed my tactic. When I went to buy a deck, I went to the bottom of my wish list and started there instead of the top. And I found a deck that I've been coveting for a while and had forgotten about because it was at the bottom of my wish list. This is Raven's Wand Oracle by Steve Hutton. Now, I got this on Amazon, as I do most of my decks. And um, it was weird because when it arrived, there was no plastic on the outside and there was no like band around the deck or plastic wrapping the deck. And the sticker was like directly on the back of the box, which I thought was very odd. And I'm wondering if I might have, I couldn't have though, because it was on my wish list. I've been shopping Amazon warehouse lately and um, things can be used there. I have no problem with used decks, but um, it was just odd. Saved me from having to strip plastic off. So I guess it's okay. So here's this beautiful, and I mean beautiful box. Look at the embossing. Look at that. So right away, I am I'm more pleased than I was just looking at it. You know, you can't tell by a photo what things are going to look like, but it's it really is a beautiful box. Deck and book set, and we have just a design there. And my favorite little snappy box, actually. There, you can hear it better. Which, I mean, this is why I thought it was so odd, because to have a, a box that's, you know, could easily pop open, I would think, yes, proved it right there, um, to not have it wrapped was kind of strange. At any rate, we open up this lovely thing. There's a nice pattern there. Here's the book, and we have some diversity right away. Always appreciated. Oh, I didn't read the back. Sorry. Inspired by Steve Hutton's popular Dark Raven Chronicles trilogy. Oh! Raven's Wand Oracle draws insights from the tale of a mysterious black wand, brave young Colfinia, whose fate it is to save witchcraft, and the sage old witch Valonia, who counsels that, counsels that mind creates matter. Other witches you will meet in the Wildwood Coven include Rhea Winsome, who shares her creative energy, Ada Crab, the senior gardener, Oceana, and the dragon twins, Hethra and Hala. Each member of the coven has important life lessons to offer. Through vivid artwork and heartfelt messages, Raven's Wand Oracle invites you to explore the profound wisdom of witchcraft. It includes 44 cards and 60-page guidebook with four custom card spreads. This is U.S. Games. And uh, the copyright is 2019. I had no idea. It sounds like that might be a young adult series. Very interesting. Let's take a quick look at the book. <clears throat> and uh, read the author's um, blurb here. I began writing and illustrating the Dark Raven Chronicles some years ago, starting with the novel Raven's Wand, named for, named for a venerable wand as black as raven feathers, hence the reference to the dark and charismatic bird. Set in 19th century Victorian Britain, the story centers on this mysterious wand and Valonia, its keeper. Valonia is a sage old witch who governs her idyllic coven Wildwood in the hills of northern England, hidden from their enemies, the Illuminata Knighthood. The series enabled me to paint witchcraft in its best light, as wise yet humble and profound yet practical. It is now my privilege to share Valonia's wisdom with you in the form of this oracle deck. I believe that knowledge should be open and accessible, and so all are invited to find guidance here, whether they're fam familiar with the books or not. For those who seek more, the novel Raven's Wand is easy to find. Okay, and it's wild witches, wildwoodwitches.co.uk forward slash novels. Many witches call Ray Wildwood Coven their home. As you explore this deck, you'll meet a good number of them, and they've told us about some of them. Um, and this just goes into more... Okay, as you work with Raven's Wand Oracle, you'll also hear speak of the dragon twins. Hear speak of? Okay. Hethra is the oak dragon of summer, while his sister Hala is the holly dragon of winter. That's kind of cool. They rest in endless sleep, dreaming the millennia away. Here, then, is the miracle that underpins Valonia's beliefs. 
which is understand that mind creates matter. Okay, so a lot like the blurb I read on the back of the box. And then we go straight into the cards and their meanings. Ba-boom. At the end, we have, using it, the spreads. There's way beware. A way beware is a small enchanted doll that witches use as boundary markers. Did you see my hand shaking there? What the heck? And then the earth and thunder spread. This is destination and preparation. The dark raven spread. Three cards. These are um, when you want to ask where to next. Cards are arranged as in the illustration. One, two, three. First card is the raven's eye. It's looking back and clarifying how you began. The second is the raven's claw, which indicates action required or to be avoided and um, in order to move forward. And the third is the raven's wing showing the potential landscape we're heading toward. Interesting. And then there's the four seasons spread. So spring is how you make ready. Summer, the action you must take. Winter, autumn is potential bounty of your plans. And uh, winter is be patient. Telling you what values you might need to be patient with. Okay. Need to be patient with. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zooming in. Okay. The backs are beautiful. So here we have these twin dragons. And that must be Hala. And that must be, what was it? Hef, 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 hefra. Hefra and Hala. Okay. Um, I'm already seeing some nicking along here, so I will tell you right off the rip, I am going to edge these cards. There are no borders. And you know, borders aren't something that really bug me. The only time borders bug me is when the deck's too big. And I think, you know, if you make it that big, why not make the image that big? And if you knock those borders off, the deck won't be that big. But other than that, they don't really bother me one way or the other. Um, I do like big images though. So I guess I would be more on the non-border side of things. So here we go. Um, the first card is called A Moment. And the artwork is beautiful. It's realistic. It's rich. Um, there's a lot here to look at. This really cool bag that I would like to have that has like scales on it. I also would like her boots. Um, the coat is awesome too, the hat, okay, he, he obviously has a fashion sense. So here's a moment, and you know, if I, when I look at <clears throat> just the image, you think, okay, dreaming, thinking, whatever, but when you add a moment to it, it's a, it's a pause. Take a moment, okay, to just be. So yeah, I'm, I'm, they feel really accessible just from that first card, a rare bloom. So here's a little witch in an eye patch and holding this rare bloom. And I see, are these the dragons? They must be. They look different than here. Oh, that's a knife. Okay. Ooh, looky here. Black Wands Redemption. Okay. This dude has a fashion sense. I love the clothing. Wow. Very cool. Black Wands Redemption. So this is something that, um, not having read the books, I don't understand what this card is about just by looking at it. Let's take a look. So, um, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> we have a, a paragraph and then we have reversed. So we just have upright and reversed. And as you can see, the backs, the backs are non-directional, so you can't tell if they're upside down or not. Sunday Flowers reveled in her powers to seduce and manipulate, but her misguided attempt to serve witchcraft led to her making a terrible mistake. In her unending quest to atone, she abandoned her past and became Black Wand. Okay, so Black Wand is a person. Did I not get that from the back here? Um... Confina, it 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 is. Her, no, they he doesn't mention that. So now we find out Black Wand is a person. 
Uh, in her unending quest to atone, she abandoned her past and became Black Wand and faced many terrifying challenges. Black Wand reminds us that no matter what we've done wrong, we can try to make amends. It might be frightening to, to confront those we have wronged. But genuine liberation is worth the risk. Maybe you believe your transgressions are so grave they can never be washed away, or that those you appeal to might not forgive you. This might be true, but to flinch from the call to atone is an even greater era, error. And interestingly... That message really felt personal at that moment. So, onward. Changing faces. Ah, oh, gorgeous. Now, while the front of the book shows racial diversity, the cards yet do not. I love the black and white. The black on white, the white on black, very yin-yang. Nice. Commemoration. They're just, they tell delightful little stories. Look at this person sitting. She's got a little altar stone and rabbits and a little mirror hanging and obviously ready to do a ritual. Commitments. Look at the wolves. Oh, hell yeah. Is that... It looks, is she... I, I don't understand what's happening up here. Because it almost looks like she's in a cave or an archway, but then clearly it's outside because they're street. Interesting. Okay. Daisy and the Dandelion. Now this looks like a sweet and joyful card, but I can't tell what uh, the meaning might be from that phrase. Let's see if I'm guessing anywhere close to right. The dandelion is very happy to have his tummy tickled. Yes. Knows how to enjoy simple pleasures. So yes. What you can't get from the phrase, you can certainly get from the palette and the image. Destroying angel. Oh my. So we don't shy away from things that are seriously dark here. That's nice to see. Dreaming days. Look at the fox. So now we have some very interesting animal characters. Wow. Ebb and flow. You know what? I want to take a look there, too, just to get a hint. Barry is distracted from her studies and not by the wonderful scenery. She's awaiting a letter and wondering what to say. It might say or not say, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that is a character. Ebb and flow. Look at the red panda. <clears throat> Very interesting things going on. I, I, I really like the world that he's presenting to me here. Eternal flame. Here's another fox. Who's this? Coven mother Cece's task is to await the return of Astris, the last dragon. So, okay. I, I want to read these books now. Family Matters. And interesting, I like that term, Family Matters, because it can talk about family issues or it can talk about the fact that family matters. Meaning is important. Interesting. Farewell all. Oh. So that's how big the dragons are, right? Although I've seen a lot of little dragons. I think there's a lot of shape-shifting in this, I'm, it would seem. Founding day. And you see, you know, how far we are in, and I have not yet seen the representation that the front of the book alludes to. Give and take. Well, here we have uh, representation as far as an elder and a giant cucumber. <laughs> Independence. Here we have a tiger person and a black kitty. See? Tiny little dragons. Teeny tiny. Wow. There we go. Mistakes teach us. <clears throat> okay, and then we have a young, a young girl who's African looking. Nature of the Beast. Needs before wants. Sabacha. I love the carved stone behind. 
I mean, I'm just fascinated with looking at all their their stuff. Night Watch. Here's another wolf figure. Look at them sleeping and dreaming. Oak and Doors. Wow. Old Ghosts. This just feels like nice. I feel, I really feel drawn into the story of this deck. And I definitely am going to check into the series. Piercing the Mist. I love the standing stones and the carvings on them. The Nature. Prove Yourself. Queen of Hearts. I'm going to mention that I've not seen any more diversity past those two cards. She looks fairyish, elvish, raven's wand. Release. Like all of these cat spirits being released, she's playing a flute. Very cool sanctuary. So I think this is a deck that you're definitely going to want to read through and especially take a look at cards where you don't really get what the meaning might be. Um, but I don't think it'll be difficult to internalize. Song of the Sea. Wow. Spread your wings. With the seagull. Mine, mine, mine might be an albatross actually standing tall look at the little it's like a little griffin stepping away <gasps> look at him strength renewed <clears throat> sweet temptation uh-huh Look how tiny the, you know, tiny beings. I Like I said, I'm very, I'm drawn because this deck is making me curious. These images make me want to know who these people are and what their story is. Taking to heart. That's a very sunny image. Taste before judging. <laughs> the call of longing. the gift. He certainly does have a gift as an artist. There's no doubt about it. The power of words. Look at the spiders. Wow. Time's arrow. Unity. Oh. My lord. Literally. Walk with wings. I love the nature. I love all the creatures. Wild at heart. I love the music represented. And Winter's Throne. Wow. Okay. I have to say, having not um, explored, although I'm getting a lot more picky um, with decks that I want to purchase, um, I've... You know, I used to just throw everything on the wish list and just by looking at the box, ooh, that looks like fun. I've been kicking some things off of my wish list and um, it's because I'm going through and I'm starting to look for other people's flip throughs of decks before I decide to purchase it or put it on the list. And one of the things that's kicking decks off is decks where all the women are naked and the men are not. Um, this is very much a female deck. I mean, there's any kind of male presence I think is shown in animals or in the creatures that are hybrids that I don't know, you know, whether they're male, female or, or otherwise. Um, anyhow, let me back back out. I think the point that I didn't finish making there was that um, I didn't really look into this deck when I put it on the list, but then I went and looked at the flip through and it was like, ooh, these images are very intriguing. So let's light up the charcoal 
give this a bit of a blessing. And, um, and I invite you, when I'm blessing my deck, to send your energy too. There we go. <clears throat> Let's light up some sage. And do our elemental blessing. By air and fire, may you be purified and charged. And this also serves to, all the things I do serve to cleanse in their own way. Any energies that might have come with them. And then, by water and earth, may you be blessed and made whole. And then may the sound of the bell clear any negativity and awaken the spirit. I welcome my guides and guardians, allies and ancestors. Thank you for being here. Um, please uh, jump into this deck. I offer you, oopsie, I offer you fresh water and I offer you the fire of Azrael to bless and awaken the spirit of divination in this deck. Hey, so mode it be. Okay, let's see how she shuffles. It's U.S. games, so I'm imagining it shuffles quite well. And, you know, 44 card deck. I have said it before, I'll say it again. I really like <clears throat> U.S. games card stock. It's workable. So it's a little stiffer than a 78 card deck. I, You know, I'm trying to think of what could I do to like give an idea of how stiff cardstock is. It's like, can I have a weight and see how much it holds or <laughs> I don't know. So it took that first shuffle. Okay. A little bit stiff, but I think it'll unstiffen. Oh, and it shuffles quite easily that way. Um, I'm going to do another bridge and then let's look at, I think that that last reading, which was the seasons. Okay, there's Dark Raven and the Four Seasons. <clears throat> Let's go Four Seasons, nice and four square. And as ever, the question that we're asking for the collective is, what do we need to do? Give us information about how we bring ourselves into the present moment how we okay that will be east that will be air spring sorry how we move into a feeling of being empowered a feeling of thriving a feeling of presence and doing our best and away from a feeling of just surviving. And, you know, topically, as I'm doing this, there has been a report about um, the effect that the pandemic has had on our personalities, personalities changing. So I'm going to be doing some thinking about that because as an astrologer, that's <laughs> yeah, a fascinating concept. Okay. Nobody else is flying out. So I think we go around the wheel. Yes, we go spring, summer, fall, autumn, and winter in the north. I'm going to scooch you up a little bit there. Okay. So the spring card i love the backs look at look how beautiful they look when they're laid out together very attractive so spring this card represents 
All right, it says, in this spread, let the compass in the center represent your question. Draw four cards and lay them around it as shown. Okay, see the compass in the middle? Well, I'm not leaving a spot, sorry. Um, <clears throat> start with the east. This is spring telling you how to make ready. And we have wild at heart. Eagles have been pushed farther into remote and rocky places by persecution. Witches have been forced to find ever more secluded locations for their covens for much the same reasons. Daisy Nettles could dwell on her bitterness at this injustice, but would it do any good? Instead, she takes flight on her lightning staff into those harsh mountains where the eagles reign and finds peace in her love of music. No matter the scale of the darkness facing us, beauty is always singing. Daisy finds just a few notes on her violin are enough to soften the gloom of the darkest clouds. So the message here about how to make ready is to start by finding beauty. Start from a place of um, being in the body and even start from a place of music. Start from a place that feeds your soul. So before we even begin, you know, we're thinking, oh, I'm stuck and I, I'm not seeing the beauty in life. How do we start? In beauty. So <clears throat> create the setting for yourself. Um, we tend to think of beauty as a visual thing, you know. And so I would say when you, to add to it the sonic beauty, to make a sound setting for yourself. And really, you know, if you're doing a ritual or something like this, and if this deck feels like a ritual deck, um, you want to set things visually, of course, but you also want to make a setting for the rest of the senses, for the sound. You need to make a sound backdrop for scent, burning incense, for touch, the things that you're wearing, are they comfortable? Do they feel good on your skin? And taste, you know, what are you going to eat and drink in your ritual for celebration? So that's where we start. And I'm going to look at the uh, reverse of this just to see how it changes. Every witch at Wildwood decorates their hair and clothing differently. Daisy's look is rather wild like her nature, but attractive nonetheless. If something fits you, then embrace it, whether others join in or not. Being part of a tribe is very empowering, but so is individuality. I mean, that just sounds like a continuation of the first message, not like a, a negative. Good writing, definitely good writing. Um, so I would say also, if we just look at the caption, Wild at Heart, talking about reconnecting with that wildness and the fact that he says um, she finds just a few notes on her violin are enough to soften the gloom. You don't have to be a musician to make music. You can get, I have a chime set. I'm a musician too, but I have a chime set that, you know, is a pentatonic scale. You can't make a wrong note on it. And you can just let yourself play. And I have friends that come over, you know, sit out there for a fire out back and they're not musicians either, but everybody takes a turn with those bells and you find that you can just follow and make music if you let yourself, if you set yourself up in a way that it isn't doomed to failure. So just a few notes where you can't make a wrong note and just allow yourself to play with those to your satisfaction. Be wild, be, um, you know, no constrictions, no rules kind of thing. Free form. Okay. So next comes summer, the action you must take. And here we have sweet temptation. Hmm. This trio of fairies was sent on a mission to collect strawberries for the coven. The juicy, ripe fruit proved too much of a temptation. Instead of harvesting the wild berries, the two younger fairies began snacking on them. Before things got out of hand, the oldest fairy reminded them of the importance of their task. Fortified by the fruit, the fairies got back to work and finished in no time. At times, it's simply impossible to resist sweet offerings. Sometimes it's not only okay to indulge, but actually keeps us motivated. 
just remember to keep the goal in mind and balance the bitter with the sweet. So the action to take, indulge in sweetness. So when we are in bare survival mode, it means that we are not uh, going over the top. We are not allowing ourselves to indulge. We are just on bare bones, right? Um, and we, we are in lack mentality. We go into survival mode because there's a lack or we're afraid there's going to be a lack. We're afraid that we won't have enough to survive. So we're just paring things down to survive. So the action to be taken to step into beauty, you know, to give something to the senses, to your ears with music that will touch your soul and open up your wild heart and then allow yourself to indulge, even if it's just a chocolate bar or a single piece of Dove Dark. You know, when I was doing keto, I would take a piece of Dove Dark and make it last for an hour and a half. Take a little bite, let it melt, you know. Let yourself indulge. Taste some sweetness. You know, figuratively or literally. <clears throat> so think of how you've deprived yourself. And then think of how you can treat yourself to some sweetness. To the west is autumn and the potential bounty of your plans. So here's what we could potentially... Mm, independence. Okay. Now, the, the reverse of this one was talking about independence, that community is wonderful, but so is independence. All right, so the potential bounty is Tiber takes a rest from chopping wood to greet a distant relative. His rustic lifestyle demands a high degree of independence, and he's prudently stored away all he'll need for winter. It's reassuring to know we can rely on others. But often we have to stand on our own two feet, like Tiber, even if it's just to prove we can. There's great satisfaction in doing things yourself. So now is the time to take command of all those small details in your life. Keep track of them, too, as good, good organization is a cornerstone of empowerment. Now, if you're going to be independent, you have to be empowered, right? You have to feel yourself as an empowered being. And, you know, not and relying on yourself rather than waiting and relying on others. So um, I like that they bring that up. So the potential bounty of your plans here, he's talking about having things stored away for the winter so that he can just rely on himself. So the potential bounty here is that sense of self-reliance when we do take care of things, when we do plan ahead. And if the fear is, I'm not going to survive, is there something I can do to stock, stick away a, a store of things that will make me feel like, okay, if the supply lines failed tomorrow, I feel like I could survive for X amount of time. Um, of course, this does take investment. And if you are living on a shoestring, you might not be able to do it. But this should also send you looking for... Um, resources toward independence what would it take so even just asking yourself so potential bounty could be the answers to the questions what would it need what would I need what would it take for me to be able to survive something like a hurricane maybe um, and looking at how you can fulfill that in order to allay your own fears about the future. And now the last card, North is Winter, telling you what values you might need to be patient with during your undertaking. Okay, so we need to be patient with proving ourselves. Okay. Jenny Heartsease. <clears throat> Je Heartsease. Jenny Heartsease has a soft spot for cats and in the derelict ruins of a brickworks. A colony of feral cats have made their home. Jenny tends their well-being when able, but she must earn their trust before they'll come to her. Trust only comes with patience. 
and that correlates completely with the category. So let those you want to draw closer do so in their own time. Jenny makes sure to avoid sudden moves or loud noise and instead goes about her work calmly and softly. When we prove ourselves as stable and constant, trust will grow. So what we may need to be patient with in this process is, uh, and I'm, I'm feeling it comes back to the self here, learning to trust yourself. Because here, you know, all of these things really were self-centered. And I don't mean that in a negative way at all. But this one is saying that trust comes in time. And so, you know, when we're moving out of feeling like we might not survive, um, that might be a bit of a red flag that we don't trust ourselves to take care of ourselves in extreme times. So as we go through these things, as we um, remember to stop being in the future and come into this present moment and let ourselves just play at beauty and generate beauty and then let ourselves indulge and remind ourselves that life has sweetness always and then um it starts to bear out the gifts of, you know, I can take care of myself. And it's saying that we just need to be patient as we grow these skills of self-care, as we learn um, to take care of the, the basics, not just for today, but, you know, looking forward. So, you know, look at her with the feral cats here. You just have to be very patient and don't do anything that's going to blow the trust, you know. So I think it's just being patient with yourself. And that is part of self-care. Um, not And the, a bigger message here is catching yourself when you're being harsh with yourself. So like if you're trying to befriend these feral cats and you yell at them they're not going to trust you and boy cats once you blow it they're not going to trust you ever again it's going to take a long time to get it back and yet think of how you speak to yourself sometimes when you've made a mistake very harsh we yell at ourselves we call ourselves terrible names so it's going to take patience in learning to trust ourselves in learning to care for ourselves it's going to and and what uh, what grows patience? Being patient. To strengthen your patience, you just have to be patient. You practice being patient. So when you catch yourself being impatient, you don't you you don't yell at yourself. You just say okay and imagine that you're befriending this feral cat, <laughs> and that you have to be kind. You have to keep your energy on an even keel, which this will certainly help with, and then be patient you know, as you're learning these new skills. This is a really cool deck. It's, you know, as happens many times, um, I get surprised. I get surprised by these decks that I haven't quite looked at. And I'm really glad that I picked this one off the list because, yeah, I like it. I'm going to go and look at the books and see if I can get them from the library. And again, I'm assuming they're in young adult, but they might not be. And I'll let you know how that goes. If you've read these books or you have this deck and you know the stories, let me know what you think. Please comment down below. And if you like this video, hit that button. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you, you're intrigued and would like to see more, um, I do unboxings. I do live stream readings. And occasionally I throw in a ritual or a prayer circle there too. There are many, many, many videos to go back through. Uh, prayer circles and things that you can avail yourself of if you don't find one live streaming soon. Um, I hope you're doing well and I hope that um, you enjoyed this video. Let me know and I'll see you next time. Until then, blessed be.